County Kerry has a rich tradition of stained glass windows. Many of these windows adorn Kerry's churches and have recently been conserved with the assistance of Built Heritage Investment Scheme grants. These grants are funded by the Department of Housing, Local Government and Heritage and administered by Kerry County Council. Ireland has no shortage of stained glass treasures. Due to our many stained glass artists, our many, many church buildings of various denominations throughout Ireland. Most Irish stained glass dates back from the 19th and 20th century. It is mostly religious and through pictures and symbols each window tells a story of some event in the Bible. With the passage of time, general exposure will cause damage to windows. Restoration ensures not only survival of these windows, but as they are brought back to their original glory and beauty, they can be fully appreciated and enjoyed for generations to come. To begin restoration, a thorough assessment of the damage is made. In many cases, hopefully, you would expect most or nearly all of the glass to be in good shape. In fact, it is typically the lead that deteriorates and will need replacing. Replacement of the lead happens every hundred years approximately, but this is totally dependent on the local conditions. If, for example, a church is near to the sea, you would expect a more rapid decline in the windows. In Valencia Island, lead deterioration and a violent storm caused damage to the windows of these two churches. This was due to the location of Valencia, which is one of Ireland's most westerly points. In cases where the glass is damaged to such an extent, replacement is the only option. Restoration in this case begins with what is historically called a cartoon. This is a drawing example of the face or any other missing piece. Secondly, trace lines are drawn onto the glass and the glass is then fired. This stage is called the investment stage. The next stage is the shading and this may require a few more firings till the job is complete. A total of four firings is optimal but an artist will make their own call on this at the time. No two windows are the same, as all are done by different artists, all with their own unique techniques. Sometimes it might take 10 samples till you get close to what the original artist did the first time around.
traditional techniques used in stained glass. For example, traditional hand painting, silver staining, traditional hand painted kiln fire glass, acid etching, sandblasting, leading and copper foiling. There are many great artists' work which are still around Ireland today. These pieces of art should be conserved where possible at all times, as they are such a big part of any church's history. It is a great honour and adventure to be able to repaint broken or missing pieces of an original stained glass panel. It's like stepping back in time and you can learn so much from these seasoned artists. You can also get a real feel for the different styles that can date back 11 centuries. When restoring stained glass, best conservation advice should be followed. Two invaluable Irish publications are A Guide to the Repair of Historic Windows and The Care of Stained Glass. Many of Kerry's ecclesiastical windows have been restored with assistance from the Built Heritage Investment Scheme Grant. A current project is St Mary's Church in Nakmagosha. Another project that has been in receipt of this grant is St Stephen and St John's Church, Castle Island. These windows were restored by Palmer Conservation. The following footage gives us a glimpse into part of the conservation of this beautiful window. Firstly, we see Glenn removing the copper tongues. Next, he is transferring the pattern of the lead onto paper by placing it over the window to create a rubbing using a wax crayon. This rubbing is the cartoon and is used for the next few stages of restoration. measurements are then made. Accurate measurements are important so that the stained glass window will fit back into a specific place. In order to get it exact, a lot of time is spent measuring and re-measuring as needed. There are various methods used to take off the old lid. Which one to use depends on personal choice and on the condition of the stained glass. The overall aim is to make it easy to disassemble the window. Glass can be damaged by many things. External damage is caused by rainwater, heavy traffic, industrial pollution, organic growth, but to name a few. Inside, even soot from burning candles over the decades and condensation will leave their mark. Each piece of glass has to be cleaned by hand, piece by piece. This is time consuming and should be cleaned by a professional. At this stage, the glass is ready for leading. 
This is where all the glass panes are joined together using new lead strips. These lead strips are known as canes. The new canes should be the same in width and height as the original ones. The placing of the leaded panels is where accurate measurements pay off. First, the copper ties are secured onto the restored saddlebars. The saddlebars are steel bars that go across from one side of the window frame to the other and holds the panels securely. Needless to say, very careful handling of the panels is a must. Finally, the fitting is almost complete. The last task to do is to use a lime mortar mix which is put all around the edge of the leaded stained glass, both inside and out. This whole process of restoration took about four weeks. These works were carried out by time-served craftsmen using traditional methods and adhering to Irish heritage guidelines. Many of the stained glass windows shown in this video were restored by Palmer Conservation.